This week has been crazy in the tech world. There have been so many updates from big tech making changes, AI monitoring you while you work. Have you heard about this? And so many other things we are going to be covering today. Before we get into it though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech coding, career, tech news, you know, all the, all the good stuff. And leave in the comments any other videos, topics you want me to make. All right, let's dive into this week's biggest news in tech. Okay, this first one really blew my mind, but it really shouldn't at the end of the day. Have you seen this article that came out? It was by IBM and it was actually a report they released and it says, in IBM, executives surveyed estimated that 40% of the workforce will need to reskill as a result of implementing AI. 40% of workers will need to reskill because of AI. Now, when I first read this and I saw headings on social media, uh, I think the immediate reaction, especially on social media, was really trying to drive fear around people and the loss of jobs that would come from this. But when you really take a minute and dive into this report and what it means, it's not as though AI is going to take over your job, but you will need to continue to reskill. And I mean, we talk about this all the time on videos on here as how important it is to continue to build up new skills. But now more than ever, is the time to do so, whether it's through taking a course online, uh, going into your local, even your local college if you prefer in person, whatever the case is, reskill, upskill, you get the point. 40% though, it's pretty wild. Oh, and I didn't mention, this is within the next three years. This isn't 10 years from now, even five years from now, this is within three years. I'm curious to hear though, has AI already impacted your job? Do you use AI in your job? Is this the future of how work will track you? This video was released and I found it super interesting to see how it made me feel, first of all. Okay, check it out, give us a watch. How does this make you feel? What is happening here that you are seeing is it is using computer vision to track how the employees are working, how fast they are working, uh, how many cups of coffee they can pour, how quickly, all of that. What does that create though for work culture? On one hand, it's you know great because the people who are working will, you know, working really hard will get rewarded. But on the other hand, is it creating this hustle culture that we have worked so hard to really get away from? And also to what happens if you check your phone? What happens if you take a little too long of a bathroom break or too long of a break? Like point being, where does it stop if these rules are implemented? There was another video circulating with computer vision as well. And this one was more around your posture. And I found this one really interesting because at first I was like, this is great, I love this. I would definitely want work to implement this and use it where, okay, let's put it up on screen here. So you can see what's happening right now is it will go red if someone has bad posture. And then if they correct their posture, it will go green. I shared both of these clips on my uh, social media and the response was so interesting. On one side, people were all for this. They were similar to myself when I saw this video, they were thinking, this is really interesting. This could be really good and help with health effects. And the other side was like, if my employer is monitoring anything other than the bare minimum of what they should be, I'm out. Which brings up the question, where is the line of what your employer can monitor? And who decides that? Is it your country's government? Is it your employer? Do us as employees have to put our foot down at some point? Curious to hear your thoughts on this. Coming in at number three for this past week's biggest tech news is around Apple. Did you hear the announcement? I was so pumped when I heard it. So on Tuesday, they announced that they will be sending out, or they were, sorry, sending out press invites for the morning of September 12th. That is when this big event will take place. And this is going to be an in-person event at the Steve Jobs Theater inside Apple Park. This is gonna be massive. I'm sure you've heard or seen the rumors of what is going to be announced, specifically around the iPhone 15. This is apparently going to be the biggest iPhone drop in a long time with new features that I'm pretty excited about. Here are some things that the iPhone 15 is rumored to have. One being that it will bring significant upgrades to colors, so new colors, uh, better battery performance, and a switch. This is the biggest update in my opinion. A switch from Apple's proprietary lightning connector to the USB-C, which would bring faster charging, 
and then also to improve camera capabilities. So there's a lot packed into there. Now, when I heard that they were releasing a new iPhone, before I heard the new features, I was like, there's, I don't need a new one. And I think that's how a lot of Apple users have been feeling. They're happy with whatever iPhone they have and they're not looking to upgrade. And we've seen that, you know, a lot of news actually on this, that the reports of iPhone, people buying the new iPhones right as they come out has really significantly dropped. So there's no surprise that they felt this pressure that for this next iPhone release, it needs to be pretty significant. Then I was thinking, okay, this is great. I wanna get the iPhone 15. I wanna see all these new upgrades. But then I'm kind of like, you know what? I don't know if I wanna be one of the first ones to get the iPhone 15 with this new charging port because a lot of times when you're traveling with your friends or family, now what's gonna happen is if they don't have that port, if they don't have the USB-C iPhone 15, you're not gonna have a charger if you forgot yours. So I'm on the fence about that. Curious to hear your thoughts though. This next one is pretty wild. Probably the wildest thing to come out of tech news this week. I feel like I say that for everything we talk about, but I don't know, this is, this is next level. Okay, what is it? Tech billionaires are planning to build a California city from scratch. Let me explain, let's take a step back on this one. It's pretty wild. So who are these investors? Well, it's an elite group. This is what they keep on saying in the articles. It's an elite group of tech executives, tech founders, you know, the whole big tech thing. Um, but some other tech entrepreneurs and investors that recently joined include LinkedIn founder, Reid Hoffman, Stripe co-founders, Patrick and John Collision, billionaire and philanthropist, Lauren Powell Jobs, and Moritz of Sequoia Capital. So we got some big money behind this here. And what what is going on? All of these tech billionaires just got together and were like, let's build our own city. Screw the cities that already exist. It's pretty wild. It's actually called, they're being called a utopia. They're saying it would be as walkable as Paris and create tens of thousands of jobs, which of course they're saying that, and maybe that will be the case, but they have to say that in order to really sell the community or cities around this area about it. So here's more about the land they bought up. So they spent 800 million, 800 million to scoop up this land. It's in Solano County and the hope is to transform it into a city. So right now it's not zoned to do so. They've been fighting, I believe in the courts or starting to, uh, to get this approved that they can actually start building on this land and building the city. And may I remind you, this area where they are building is desert. It is flat, it is dry. It's not like this lush green area to build on. They're starting from nothing, which I guess if you're a tech billionaire is your last problem. Residents though that live around this area are very angry. Uh, I'm reading in the Los Angeles Times actually and what they say about it is, some of the things the residents are worried about is what is going to happen to, you know, they have tons of livestock around this area. What's going to happen to the livestock? What's going to happen to their quality of life if this massive city is just like plunked in the middle and then surrounding areas, they'll be affected. And what does that mean for the cost of living? It impacts so many people. I'm really curious to see if this gets approved and if so, how this all unfolds. And I'm even more curious to see how people will react to this. Would you wanna to move to a tech billionaire city? Two other small things, but big things that I wanna update you on. One is Google just launched watermarks for AI generated images. This is a huge step in the direction of being able to have some guidelines or some restrictions around AI. Up until now, it's really been the wild west with AI generated images. Check out my latest thumbnails. Uh, or AI generated content, not knowing what is real and what is false. Obviously something like images, a lot of times you do know is AI generated. I mean, for my own thumbnails, I always encourage, like I'm like, yes, this is AI generated. It's very obvious uh, for the ones that are anyways. And it's a fun way to, to make content, but I do think it's a really good idea to start labeling what is real and what is AI generated, especially when we get more into deep fakes and what that means in various industries. Last on the list is, I just found this really interesting, which is computer scientists develop open source tool for dramatically speeding up programming language Python. Uh, I found this really interesting because one of the issues that I've heard over and over again using Python in production is a lot of times they're notoriously slow. Actually, it says here in this article, it is 60,000 times slower than code written in other programming languages. So 
a team of computer scientists at the University of Massachusetts uh, recently unveiled a prize winning Python profiler called Scalene. Now this is pretty interesting. So what essentially we'll do is Scalene will identify where Python is having trouble in keeping up the areas in the code that Python is having a bit of trouble. Then it uses AI to leverage the same technology actually that is used in ChatGPT to suggest ways to optimize individual lines or even groupings of the code. So really how to refactor or reformat the code and refactor the code in a better way that will make it run more efficiently. Now I found this quote from the founders really interesting. He said, computers are no longer getting faster. Future improvements in speed will come less from better hardware and more from faster, more efficient programming. I thought that was really interesting and thought provoking. And it is true. I think as programmers, a lot of times, we kind of take for granted, we think a lot too late oftentimes about how to code efficiently, or maybe it's just myself, and you just start coding in the way that you are comfortable with. In turn, you're like, ah, oh, this could have been done in a better way to really speed things up. So very interesting. All right, that is the top five, well in this case six, biggest things to happen in tech this past week. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.